Hi everyone, this is Coder Jeet and I'm back today with another video on coding in Blazor. In this video, I'm going to talk about error and exception handling in Blazor. It works kind of like classic or C-sharp apps, but just a bit differently. And we will be talking about that. First thing, I'm heavily focused on Blazor client side because this is the scalable technology that you can use to build multi-user SaaS with thousands of users. And client-side Blazor or Blazor WebAssembly runs on the web browser and uses WebAssembly to translate C-sharp code into browser instructions. The error handling too happens on the browser, but you can debug it in Visual Studio. We're going to take a look at how that works. Second, Blazor gives you error boundaries that you can set to prevent an exception from taking down an entire application and we will be discussing that. And lastly, we'll talk about how to log errors in Blazor. So let's get started. But before we do, could you please hit that like button so that my videos can reach more people? And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do subscribe now and click that notification bell so that you don't miss the videos that I'm creating. So just to review the topics that we're going to touch in this video, the first one is handling errors on the server side. Now, a Blazor website, especially if it's a WebAssembly website, you can divide it into two distinct portions, the client portion, which is going to run in the browser and the server side portion, which is going to run at the server side and is nothing but a kind of an API project. So the client side will be calling the server side. So we'll be learning how to handle errors both on the server side and the client side. And then we'll take a look at using custom error display. So you can display your errors in exactly the way you want to. You can design the error exactly the way you want through CSS. And we'll see how to do that on the WebAssembly side. And then we're going to look at error boundaries, which are a way to limit the impact of the error to a certain component or a certain area so that the entire application does not go down due to an error. And finally, we're going to look at custom error components. So we're going to be able to create custom components that will be passed down the pipeline to the uh, error causing component or to the component that you want to work with. And if there is an error, the error will bubble back to the to the custom error component and it will be used to finally display the error. So let's take a look and see exactly how to write the code for all of these. Okay, so what I have on the screen right now is the default Blazor project that you get when you create a new Blazor WebAssembly app in Visual Studio. So you can see that this project is divided into two projects actually. Actually, there are three, but the two projects of interest that I'm talking about are the Blazor Errors Client project and the Blazor Errors Server project. Remember that I told you earlier that a Blazor app, a WebAssembly Blazor app is divided into two separate projects, the client side and the server side. The client side will run on the browser and the server side will run on the server. So this is exactly what the structure is about. And this is the app on the, on the right side over here. And you can see it's nothing but a simple counter and there is a fetch data component over here, which is fetching the data from the backend. And this is actually from the controllers. When we go into the weather forecast controller, there is a function called get. It's an action method, HTTP get action method called get. And what it's doing is nothing, just generating some random numbers. So this is not authentic data, right? Minus 13 to nine is definitely not sweltering, right? So what it's doing is just generating some random data in a range, like from the day before, uh, from the day, from the next day to the next five days, as simple as that, and just some random temperature data from minus 20 degrees to 55 degrees to the positive, and a summary that too with random. So all of this is not relevant. And if you refresh it, it'll change all over again. Here is what error handling at server and client side is different. So this over here, the server project is nothing but a regular ASP.NET Core project. Now, if you are running Blazor connected to an ASP.NET Core hosted project, that is only then. If you're running Blazor in connection with a different backend, you can even run Blazor with a Node.js backend or a PHP backend. It's all perfectly possible. And then you would have to process the server uh, errors and codes add in those applications, in those code bases. But here we've got an ASP.NET Core app and that's the most common use case 
because who would write backend in Node.js and frontend in uh, C Sharp? That doesn't really make sense. So what I've got here is the ASP.NET Core application, the server app, and in here I can trap all my errors and process them just like I would trap them and process them in a API project, API style of project, because there is not really a front end over here. They're not really uh, a lot of uh, pages or views that you can show. It's an MVC project, all right, but the view part is just not there. The view part is all in the client section. So if I had an error over here, that error would actually not be shown directly on the front side, on the front end. You would have to write some code for it to actually transport the error from the back end to the front end. I'm gonna show you an example. So I'm just gonna actually throw an error right here. So throw new exception and we can give it a message. Something wrong. And let's try to run it again. All right, so when we go to fetch data, there is an error. You can see there is a, there is a yellow bar at the bottom of the front end, and it's not really the same error page that you're used to seeing in ASP.NET Core, right? Something happened. So if you use the, uh, the developer tool section in console, you will see this interesting error. Microsoft ASP.NET Core component WebAssembly has an error, and the error is a 500 error. So 500 error, if you remember, it's the server side error, which says there was a server side error. That's what it said. But there are no details of the error. What exactly what happened? You don't know that at all, right? Because what's happening in the client application is in the fetch data component, it's just making an API call to the backend using an HTTP client object. So that's why you can say, you see here, this is an HTTP client error and you're getting the error from the backend. You don't really know what went on. You're not even getting the text that I wrote in the error message. If you wanted to trap this error, you could use a regular try catch block. I've got one set up here and let me just stop the execution. Yep. And you can write your custom error handling code here. If you want to use the logger, there is a logger which is already a part of the project. You get it as a part of the setup. If you want, you can use a custom logger like end log or any other logger you want. And if I want to log this error dot error and something happened. So all of that is possible. You can even pass the error here and the error will be logged. You can keep a store on the server. You can send yourself an email depending on the logger setup. Now this is definitely totally distinct from the front end. So before I do this, I also need to return something. So I'm just going to return no and if we run it again, pretty much the same error will occur, but this time we've written the error handling code in the backend, so something will be logged. So if you check the output window, you will see the error details. The error details are all here, and you can see my error, something happened, so that's been logged too. And this is how you would handle the backend errors. You can just write try catch blocks, log them, and store them into the database or process them whatever way you want. If you want to handle them and return something else, you can do that too. But on the front end, things are a little bit different. Firstly, the front end is not connected to your database. It's not connected to your back end. So if you want to carry the information from the front end to the back end, you would have to make a separate API call, a separate HTTP call. But before that, there are different conventions to show the customers a, a more elegant error message on the front end not the yellow bar because that's not helpful at all and we're going to look at that now to modify how the error looks on the front end we have to go into www root and you will find the index.html file which actually has the blazor loader code and you will find an div which which has the id blazor error ui and this is the div which shows up whenever there is an error and blazor has to show an error and you can change anything inside it that you want. You can change the text in here or you can even style it differently. So if you go into the CSS files folder, you will find app.css and this is where the CSS has been defined. So let's just change a little bit. Just let's give it a height, which is bigger. And let's put this in a H2. And let's put a BR between the link and the reload over here. And let's see what happens going to fetch data and you can see it looks a quite a bit different so you can style it any way you want using this component
Now let's go further with this and do something better with our error. Let's explore the concept of error boundary. So I'm going to go into the layout page and this is where the actual body is loaded for the current component. So I'm going to put this in an error boundary and we're going to have an alternative error display. So we can, if there is an error, we can show the custom error content that we want to show in an error content object. Let's do an H1 error. So instead of the component, we should see only this message. So let's try this. Of course, we have to put this in a child content component, the actual body that we want to use. So this should work now. And if we run it, okay, you can see the home is working. You, when you load up the counter, the counter works. But when you go to fetch data, you get there was an error. And this time there is no yellow bar. That's because you put everything in an error boundary. So the error does not go to the top level. It does not affect the entire app. Only the component that you bounded inside the error boundary. So if an error occurs inside a component that is inside the child content of error boundary, instead of that particular component, Blazor will show the error content. That, and here you can put in anything you want. You can put in your custom HTML content or you can even put in a separate error content component. It's perfectly valid. So you can have your own custom error pages. All right, notice this. Whenever we go to a page that has an error, after that, if we try to navigate away, for example, if we try to navigate to home account in this app, it's not working because the, the app is now in error state and it's just not gonna work. Nothing here is gonna work, but you can get over this with a little bit of code. So let's see how to do that. So I'm gonna start a code section on our page and we're gonna declare an error boundary object nullable and call it error boundary and then we're going to override the on parameter set function and here we will just ask for the error to be recovered and we will get a reference to this component from here so at ref equals to error boundary that's our component's name okay uh, just make sure we use the colored correct spelling that should work so now let's run it and see what works here we are, big fat error, but now we can navigate back to counter and the app actually works. So this is very important. If you have an error, the entire app should not go down. You should enclose your errors in error boundaries. And for our final trick, we'll put this in a dedicated error component. So just gonna cut it. And inside our code, we're gonna introduce an error component over here, add razor component, let's call it error component. And just put our code over here. Come back. Error component. This should do it. Let's run it and check it out. You can see we're getting there was an error over here and it's coming from the component. So this wraps up our error tutorial. I hope it was useful for you. If you got something out of it, don't forget to give me a like and hit that subscribe button because I'm making these tutorials all the time and we'll be talking about development as it's done in the real world. This is your best friend in programming, Kodajit, signing off.